Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by Harry's. For guys who want a great shave experience for a fraction of what you're paying now, go to harrys.com. Get $5 off your first purchase by entering the code HAMNATION when you check out. And by ICOM. For more information, visit icomamerica.com slash hamnation. And by DX Engineering. DX Engineering offers practically everything you need to outfit your shack, plus the fastest shipping in the industry. In-stock items ship the same day, Monday through Friday, until 10 p.m. Eastern. For more information, visit dxengineering.com slash Ham Nation. This is Ham Nation, episode number 179, January 14th, 2015. Gordo and Bob return from CES. Hello, everybody. It's Ham Nation, and uh, my name is Bob Heil, K9EID. I, I say that because I haven't been here for so long. I just wanted to make sure everybody knew who I was. And it's really great to be back here. Uh, there's been so much happen in the last month, and uh, you guys have been taking care of things here really well, and I appreciate that. And I just want to do a quick uh, roust about the country here, and we're going to come back to them all. But Gordo in Costa Mesa, how are you? Everything all right? Everything. It was great and good to see you and Sarah at CES, and we'll see more of you two shortly. And uh, those down in Texas, in Forest Hill, Texas, Cowtown, the Ham Fest coming this Friday evening and all day Saturday. Bob, back to you. Okay. Well, that, uh, that sounds like fun. I wish I could be there. And uh, Don, how are you doing? Everything all right there? Yeah, everything is awesome, Bob. It's good to uh, see you. Nice to have you back. And, and speaking of Hamfest, there's one in my neck of the woods as well this weekend in Hammond, Louisiana, just across Lake Pontchartrain, north of New Orleans. It's a good Hamfest. It's uh, in all years past, it's been a free Hamfest. I think it may still be. But uh, if you just Google the Hammond, Louisiana Hamfest, I'm sure you'll find all the information that you want. And coming up uh, just after the Newsline segment tonight, I'll give you an update on Bill Pasternak. Okay, we're looking forward to it. Down to Mississippi, George, how are you doing? Nice to see you. Good to see you, Bob. I'm glad to have you and Gordo both back with us. It's been kind of chilly here for the past couple of weeks. Uh, we've got a couple of warm days, but, you know, cold to us, anything below 30 degrees here is cold. I know it's not the same way up north, but it's so cold here, I had to bring the chickens in. <laughs> Oh, golly. Well, we're looking forward to your uh, segments tonight. Your background looks good. That's your green screen happening. I'm going to take a couple of minutes to tell a few people, bring you up to date. There's been so much happening. First of all, one of the big things is the fact that <clears throat> these are going to go away. Uh, I had uh, not all, but most of the eye surgeries done, and I'm doing well. Uh, so that's all been been good and uh I'm happy about that. The other thing, and I guess it's the uh, the biggest deal, if you haven't heard, it took me 55 years, but I was awarded uh, the doctorate degree from University of Missouri, uh, and we were extremely honored by this. I And guess what? There really is something there. I thought it'd probably be blank, but it's the real deal. And I was so thrilled about it. Very honored. I, I told the chancellor, I said, my stepson took him 18 years to get through that. And here you guys, uh, you're going to give it to me in, in a, an hour. Uh, something's wrong. He said, no, it took you 55 years. <laughs> <laughs> I did the commencement speech for the graduation. I loved, I loved speaking to people, as all of you know, and and sharing all of this. And you can bet that speech had a lot to do with amateur radio. And uh, there's proof of uh, what went on. And I'm I'm really excited about this because uh, 
it it's uh, it's been a long time and i learn every day every day i learn something and uh, i continue to learn and they bestowed all of that on me i really was honored by that so we're back here for a week and we're then out to uh, california to the nam show the music merchandise show but we had a lot of fun in uh good old uh, new york we had a lot of fun in in missouri getting the degree but then we went to las vegas with gordo and that was really super we had so much fun there but um before uh, gordo gets into all of his stuff um i had a little, a little short video of two gals uh, i met up on 75 i know we were on 40 meters the other day and they have a little message for you let's uh, see if we can roll that real quick now from k9 eid uh, bye, bye, bye. I just happened wow. to catch the gals at 40, and we had a great time uh, talking to them that day. They had just gotten their headsets and got them all. You got to adjust these things, you know. All of my stuff has steel, so you got to bend them and make them sh shape so they don't squeeze your ears too much. They got them all adjusted right, and we're sounding great. So we had a good time that afternoon with the girls on 40 meters. You will note that I was on a very strange frequency. It wasn't right on a double zero, and it wasn't on a five. And the reason was you could hear it in the background. We were very close to somebody, so you move down the band. It's very important that you do this. I'm finding more and more people are not paying attention to this today. And we're having all of these problems with people sitting on top of each other and so on. There's a lot of room. But don't pay attention to these zero zeros and da-di-da. Listen. Listen and move around a little bit so you can go down a little bit off of all the main frequencies and squeeze your signal in there so we're not making a lot of problems for everybody. That's a, that's a real problem, and, and I hate it when, uh, when I hear, hear a lot of people doing that kind of stuff. So what can we do? Gordo, you were in Las Vegas at the CES show. And you have a bunch of things to show us. So let's go back to Costa Mesa and let, let her roll, Gordo. It's all yours. All right. Uh, thanks, Bob. And we have your glasses here. In fact, uh, we needed these glasses <laughs> for some of the things that we saw at CES. Three dimension. Whoa, boy, they were good. So, Brian, if you'll go ahead and roll CES. And we're rolling. There we go. The CES show opened up uh, right on schedule. 150,000 folks poured into uh, the CES uh, convention center. And they had several different convention centers. And um, it was, we knew, going to be a great show because it was literally packed from the day we started walking it. And you heard about Oculus. Let me tell you, you didn't need glasses for this. It was like the real thing. And for those of you that uh, do a little hamming on biking, wow, Ram Mounts has every conceivable mount. Want a close look at CES? They had microscopes looking at integrated circuits. Whoa, look at that. Stuff you don't even see with the naked eye, but with a telescope, yes. A lot of neat color um, uh, scopes coming in from overseas, and uh, they were all in action. 
But the hit of the show was, of course, the unmanned space flying machines, sometimes called drones, but they've got other names now. They were in cages, so they wouldn't go too far, but they went plenty far, fly out of the cage and literally land in your hand as a uh, demo. FAA was there. They are embracing the drones, but said, please fly them within the regulations that are now in place and go to FAA and you can learn about it. But look at all of these neat little drones, small ones, big ones. And look at this. Talk about a neat uh, command center to see where your drone is looking at Google Earth in the background. So pretty neat when you're radio controlling. Uniforms. Ladies, these guys were looking good in their uniforms. Everybody had uniforms. And guys, well, what can I tell you? You couldn't help but stop at the outdoor booth uh, and uh, check out uh, these uh, uniforms. And there it is in uniform, special guest Bob Heil at Klipsch. And Bob, legendary inventor. And there is the brains behind Bob, and that's Sarah Heil. Sarah, you do so much for Heil Sound. Thanks for always being there. Didn't see many radios, but this one was a GMRS radio from Midland, and they make FRS as well. <clears throat> and look at this. They have it out uh, in a nice little vehicle. Wasn't running. Uh, the radio was, but not the vehicle. But there were some fun vehicles there. Uh, Sierra Wave uh, was one of the leaders of... Um, uh, big power packs, uh, enough to run 110 volts for quite some time. They are using lithium iron. Now, we're going to have to wait and see out at Quartzfest whether or not this little tiny 400-amp uh, device is going to actually start a uh, vehicle. But these were the jump starters, eight or nine different manufacturers of those. Oh, yeah, a plastic car, not great for shielding RF, but pretty neat to take a look and see what's inside of today's mobile machine. And uh, here was the FLIR. Last year, they had an add-on device to what would go on a cell phone. But this year, they said, no, we've got new technology. It's going to plug in the top. So they'll turn it over, and bingo. We could see um, how warm everybody was using forward-looking infrared FLIR, a little add-on to your cell phone. Not much new with solar panels. There were a lot of them. And uh, solar panel technology has not changed. There were no breakthroughs at solar at CES. Sanjin, uh, one of the few radio receivers showing at CES show, and they have a sideband receiver as well as traditional dial receivers. So it's good to see that uh, the good old tuning dial is still around. Glasses free, 3D? No, didn't make it. Uh, it just didn't pop like LG and Panasonic and many of the others that really uh, required glasses, great 3D. Look at this, power cords that actually show you which way the current is going. Uh, sort of show and tell, but it's a neat way to keep your iPhone or your Android going. And Val, you'll love this, overlays to the computer, custom, you can do them on the computer and then stick them on, and that way you can log your DX contacts. Those hot ones with Bob will put in yellow, okay? And this is good. The ham industry should watch this. They had an area just for kids, kids only. And this is Celestron, of course, the uh, telescope folks, doing a good job of keeping kids looking at the sky. Oh, yeah, there was food at CES, but break out the wallet, $21. But we got the barbecue chips with it, one soft drink, and one mile-long hot dog. And after you ate that hot dog, you had to go for a little mouth cleaning Maybe some stomach cleaning as well. But $21 for a hot dog? I don't know. So from CES, uh, we uh, jumped in our car. <laughs> well, not really. And said, thanks for joining us. And, of course, when you go to the CES show in Las Vegas, you got to stop by and see the great folks at Amateur Electronics Supply about five minutes away. And they said business was really booming for all the visitors coming into Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, Don Arnold, W6 GPS and Bayon have us uh, going GPS all the way out to Quartzsite, Arizona, day after tomorrow. Chris KR1SS is going to be the leader. 
Uh, she is there to greet us all. And uh, Quartzsite, Arizona is not just a fun ham thing. It's fun learning of ham radio operator. Everything is live. And uh, there is the uh, ECS group out of San Bernardino Emergency Communication Service. And all of these uh, demos were live and direct, including the movies on the side of an RV. Thanks to Neil and Ward that uh, had this one uh, set up. So every night this coming week, We'll uh, see uh, movies. We'll take some of those Celestron scopes and look at the sky. And uh, there's our special event station, W7Q. Please work us. We're going to be on all bands with the ICOM 9100. We're going to be demonstrating the off-center fed dipole. And by the way, you always want to check things out before you leave for a big uh, radio event. This one had uh, some marks on it. I thought, hmm, is this coax any good? Well, the way you tell about the connector, who was there first, is back off the barrel. Take a look and see if the uh, inside uh, areas are soldered to the braid. Yep, that one fast. This one, well, it didn't look too good on the end, so we pulled its shell back. Oh, no, they didn't solder it. So uh, it's a good thing to check out your connections before you head off for a big event like uh, Quartz Fest. Now, the way you check uh, your coax, of course, uh, you can check continuity, make sure it's open with nothing on the other end. But wait a minute, how do you know you have continuity of the center conductor? Lick your thumb, lick it a couple of times, real sloppy. Take your thumb on the other end of the coax that you're trying to meter, stick it over it, and if your meter's on the highest ohmic uh, reading, you're going to see the meter go up to about half scale on the 1K or 10K uh, uh, motion. That lets you know. And when you take your thumb off and you're metering the other end of the coax, it should drop to zero. Instant way to tell with your thumb on, thumb off, whether or not you've got a good piece of coax cable. Well, sometimes you're by yourself and you got one coax up on the roof and a whole bunch coming down. You take one of these electrolytic capacitors and make sure it's discharged. You attach uh, the capacitor to uh, the piece of coax cable, uh, either down below or on the roof. And as soon as you meter it with your meter at uh, R times one or higher, you're going to see the meter flick. And then it's going to go up and then slowly come back down. So here we are, ready to operate our special event station, W7Q. And those of us at uh, Quartzsite are going to be looking forward to hearing you give us a call beginning this Sunday and rolling all next week. We're going to be testing a lot of different devices from Bion and Don Arnold, W6GPS. We're going to be squawking our position. The transceiver is built in. Lion has perfected this. All we do is add GPS or we can squawk our position. But look for us on APRS at WB6NOA dash and, um, well, whatever number you want. And we should pop up in the middle of the desert. So for those of you that will be tuning us in on the air, we hope to work you on our ICOM 9100. We've got the 2820 we're going to be using for talking on 146.55. Randy and many of our other folks are going to be there. So we'll see you out in the desert and we'll try and get to you on next Wednesday night as we burn our effigy. We can't call it uh, burning man. That uh, has been trademarked. So burning ham is someone else's name. So we'll call it burning sand ham, but we'll be having fun on the desert. Dr. Bob, back to you. And we're heading off to Quartzsite, Arizona. See you there. Key. Super duper. Wish I could be there, but I got to go the other direction, but that's all right. That's all right. Hey, uh, Chip was right. Uh, uh, at K9 MIT, I was on, I did have my crystals. You see, that's the thing. I had my special crystals. That's why I was on strange frequency. Yeah, right. And, and I have to give kudos to Ron, K9 ID. It's not channelized radio. We are amateur radio and we can go anywhere we're licensed. And I, I hear these guys on the air once in a while talking about, let's go to this channel. What are you talking Where's the channel on this thing? Uh, don't get me started. Anyway, anyway, <clears throat> hey, uh, Gordo, I got a good one for you. I'm tuning around the other day. I've got a, a, an Alinko. I think you have one of these little guys. Uh, uh, I do. I've been playing around, with this and it's a great little beginning transceiver. And uh, here's what I found. Uh, on 10 meters. It was a beacon. Uh, roll that for us, please, Brian.
Now, now you, you, Gordo, tell us about your uh, your fascination with beacons. They're very important, uh, aren't they? Oh, yeah. When you're uh, testing your rig and your antenna and you just want to make sure you've got reception, uh, beacons, and there are probably 80 to 100 on the 10-meter band, 28 uh, 200 to 28 300 plenty of activity for beacons and uh, tune those beacons in and uh, read a little bit of CW and find out where the band is open beacons always there 24 hours a day and when the sky waves come in you're ready to hear them and that Alinko is one great uh, low-cost radio yeah, I've had really good luck with it. The microphone is awful. I do have to say that, not because I'm in the microphone. <laughs> it's all, it's, it's not usable. It really isn't. It's awful. I was on the air today, and it was awful. I uh, uh, stuck on one of the HM12s, and it was presentable. Like I said, well, thanks. <laughs> but uh, the radio is cool, and it's not very expensive. Well, I, I love the beacons, and 6 meters, 10 meters, they're very useful. I, I don't know what we'd do without beacons. And if you're not aware of them, everybody, be aware. Find out about them and, and listen for them. If you're just sitting around, put your receiver uh, on a couple of those frequencies and you'll know when the band's popping open and it's really amazing you can listen forever and there's nothing there all of a sudden pow here they come well we're going to go down and um, i guess we get our razors out because uh, don's going to tell us again about <laughs> harry's which i used about two hours ago so let her rip and let's see what's happening don yeah and you look fine bob you really do i can i can tell you have a clean close shave you don't look at all like the duck dynasty guys which you know uh, hey if you can pull that look off more power to you most of us can't but uh <laughs> and it's a problem actually and that's uh, saving money and now that the holidays is over harry's gonna help you do that harry's is fixing a problem that like i said most of us have and that's paying way too much for overpriced razors shaving's not fun it's it's kind of a chore you know you can cut yourself Scrape yourself with dull blades, uh, and they're expensive. Uh, the blades run about four bucks a pop. A guy who shaves every day, I don't, my beard doesn't grow that much, so I don't have to shave every day, but you can spend hundreds of dollars a year just on razors like the Gillette Fusion, for example. And when you go to the store to buy them, sometimes you got to deal with, with them locked up behind plexiglass cabinets. Well, there's a company that's fixing all of it, and it's called Harry's. High-quality razors at about half the price of the big brand blades. They make their own razors in their own factory in Germany. This is this is just as cool as it. You need to go to harrys.com and look at these videos. Uh, there they are making the blades right there. Go to harrys.com and check these videos. They engineer them for sharpness and high performance. They're in Germany, and then they ship them to you for free. And because they make and ship their own blades, it's a more efficient company, which means Harry's can give us factory direct pricing. And your satisfaction is absolutely guaranteed in each kit. You get a razor with a handle that looks and feels great. Three razor blades and foaming shave gel. I'm going to show you that here in just a sec. The starter Truman set is an amazing deal. You get all of it for just 15 bucks. And uh, I've been using Harry's for a while now. Now, I, I am, I've told you this before, I am I am a absolutely an electric razor fan, okay? I never did like shaving with a blade. And this, And I'm not saying this because I'm reading a Harry's ad. Since I started using Harry's, I actually look forward to shaving with the Harry's razor. It's kind of a, it, it's kind of a ritual. You know, I'm a pipe smoker and a cigar smoker, and you got rituals that you go through with both of those. And I'm, I also enjoy making coffee in a French press, and that's a ritual as well. I kind of treat <laughs> the Harry's seriously. I kind of treat the Harry's shave as a ritual. It's something nice that I do for myself. And that's how I look at it. And and Harry's is cool. It gives me a clean, close shave. It's a comfortable shave. I love the look. I love the feel of the set. It's the, the, the set that I have has a metal handle. It's really great. And I love the price. It costs about half as much as other razors in the store, like the Gillette Fusion. They also have this new aftershave moisturizer that will protect and hydrate your skin. Now, come back to me, Brian. I don't want to show you the box. Here's, here, you get a box, okay? It's just it's your basic nondescript box. It's got a nice little H with the thing. But, you know, their logo is a woolly mammoth. And, and I've showed you this before on the, on the blade, the box that the blades come in right here. It's got a woolly, woolly mammoth on it, okay? Well, I just noticed this. When I opened up the box, I'm sitting here, and I'm opening up the box, and I opened it up, and I went, well, look at that. Look, you open up the box, and what do you see? I, there's a woolly mammoth. There's just, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's cool as it can be. And, and so here, here's, the, here's the set. You get the box, 
Let me get that right and see. Okay, here we go. The razor's in this, is in the white box here. And then up here you have your shave gel. Let me just pull all this out because it's, it's a pain to look at it. The shave gel. This is this is good stuff. It's real and, and it smells neutral. So if, if you're like me and you like a cologne, this is there we go. It's not gonna clash with it. So you have the nice box that the razor comes in. You have the th the blades, three blades come in here. There one in the razor, two in here. So you got three blades. And a travel cover, so you don't, you know, cut anything up in your in your suitcase. Here it is. Now, now this is this is the the dark um, handle. This is the one that was the holiday special. Um, the one I have is is chrome, polished chrome. But it, it's a it's a great razor. Five blades. There, you can't see it, but I know. But there are five blades in there. Like I said, go to Harry's.com and check out all the videos, and uh, and check it out, and you're gonna love it. And while you're there, you can get five dollars off your first purchase. With code HAMNATION, harrys.com, H-A-R-R-Y-S.com, enter code HAMNATION at checkout. And Harry's, thank you so much for your support of Ham Nation and also your support of, of our wonderful faces. And now let's, <laughs> let's take a look at the news of the week from Amateur Radio Newsline. From Amateur Radio Newsline, these are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, January 14th, 2015. Despite financial struggles dogging the owners of the Hera Arena, the site of the Dayton Hamvention since the 1960s, the 2015 Hamvention General Chairman Jim Tiderman, N8IDS, has told the AWRL that Hera is the home of the world's largest amateur radio show this May and in the years to come. He said Hamvention's sponsoring Dayton Amateur Radio Association and Hamvention officials have been in conversation with Hera's owners, the Wampler family, regarding the future of the 165,000 square foot six building complex. Tiderman adds, both Hamvention and Dara have absolute confidence in the Wampler's family guiding their corporation through the steps in the plans in place to keep Hera operating for years to come. Dayton TV station WDTN reported last month that the 50-year-old Hera Arena was facing financial problems and had cut back on its full-time staff to save money. The arena has been working with Venue Works, which specializes in restoring event venues. Dayton Hamvention takes place May 15th through 17th. And last year, the Dayton Hamvention attracted nearly 25,000 visitors. CQ Magazine has announced that it will publish a combined January-February 2015 issue and cease publication of its CQ Plus digital supplement as of the March 2015 issue. Publisher Dick Ross, K2MGA, said that both moves are intended to help restore the magazine's normal schedule for its print edition and to strengthen its foundations moving forward as it enters its eighth decade of publication. These decisions weren't made lightly, Ross added, but in recognition of the realities of the publishing industry, it's a tough time to be in the magazine business, and we appreciate the patience and loyalty of both our readers and our advertisers. CQ announced last February that it was incorporating content from the magazine's three sister publications, Popular Communications, CQ VHF, and World Radio Online, into CQ+. The publisher also phased out the print editions of Popular Communications and CQ VHF and said World Radio Online would no longer exist as a separate online publication. CQ will continue to publish both print and digital editions, but the digital edition will no longer contain the 50 to 60 additional pages each month that constituted CQ+. Editor Rich Moses and W2VU has said he hopes to include some CQ Plus content within the pages of CQ, but added that Ham Radio will remain the magazine's primary focus. CQ marks its 70th publication anniversary with its January-February issue. Due to the combined January-February issue, CQ will extend by one month all print and digital edition subscriptions to CQ. Still with Ham Radio-related magazines, well-known AWRL contributing editor Ward Silver, N0AX, has debuted a new column for Nuts and Volts magazine, The Ham's Wireless Workbench. Nuts and Volts is written for the hands-on hobbyist, design engineer, technician, and experimenter, which describes a lot of radio amateurs. The editor of the print and digital publication is Brian Bergeron, NU1N. He says, the general idea is to open the door to ham radio for the electronically inclined folks who either may not be aware of the hobby or who might find some of our technology interesting and or useful. Silver said, this is an excellent opportunity to provide outreach for the active and growing electronic maker or do-it-yourself audience. Every other month, Silver will cover a topic that showcases some aspect of amateur radio technology that's not typically covered by non-ham media. Such topics would include such things as antennas, transmission lines, connectors, propagation, transmitters, and modulation, areas not often discussed outside of QST 
and other ham radio publications. His first column in the January 2015 issue is an introduction to antennas, specifically how to make a VHF-UHF ground plane for listening to NOAA weather radio stations. In previous newscasts, we've mentioned the small party-type balloon and payload that left Melbourne, Australia, December 27th. Well, it's now been tracked during its flight, and it has reached South America. Andy Nguyen, VK3YT, who launched the latest balloon, said it was tracked firstly to New Zealand, then did a few loops in the South Pacific, but traveled east with dozens of reports being received. He said the solar-powered balloon went silent at night, but its JT9 signal was heard when the radiation from the sun powered up the transmitter. It's been quite challenging for the tracking stations as the sunset time has been getting earlier and earlier and started overlapping with propagation time when the signal could be heard in ZL and VK just as when the balloon went to sleep. A big thank you to the new stations joining the tracking in the last few days, making this a true international exercise, said Andy, VK3YT. The balloon was over Chile and may exit that country traveling further, needing more tracking. And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news brought to you weekly for over 37 years and counting at www.arnewsline.org. For Bill Pasternak, WA6ITF, I'm Don Wellbanks, AE5DW73, and we'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. All right, some good stuff in there. And, uh, of course, uh, the audio edition of uh, Amateur Radio Newsline is still on hiatus because Bill is still in the hospital, but he has been posting to Facebook a little more regularly, which is a good thing, and he's actually been posting some neat news stories of the last few days. So this is his latest, uh, or one of the latest uh, Facebook postings. I saw this on uh, Saturday or Sunday, and I'll read it to uh, to you for those of you who uh, can't see it on your screen or maybe listening to the audio podcast uh, from Bill Pasternak on Facebook. For those of you wondering, or possibly not wondering, where I've been hiding the past two weeks or so, the quick answer is in the hospital here in Los Angeles. I won't go into the details, but let's just say that a simple outpatient procedure led to my doctor discovering another health issue that convinced me that some tests were needed and uh, that best be done a as an inpatient. And while I was here, another of my doctors decided he wanted to also run some long put-off tests as well. As a result, I wound up spending the holidays here in this small room with all sorts of connections to medical monitor, of which I'm still connected to one. I'll likely be here till midweek and then spend a few weeks at a rehab facility before heading the 36 miles back to Santa Clarita and home. Not a fun place to be, but it has great Wi-Fi. And after using my Samsung Galaxy Pad, my buddy Todd uh, brought with me uh, brought me a spare laptop. And at least I'm now back online with a screen I can see. And as they say, that's the story from here, Bill P. So we uh, we wish Bill the best, a continued uh, speedy recovery. And uh, Bill, to your health, my friend. And uh, George, let's, uh, uh, you know, I mentioned um, uh, the, uh, the, the Ham and Ham Fest coming up this weekend. Well, the weekend after, of course, is the Jackson Ham Fest up in your neck of the woods. And uh, you've got, I'm looking forward to seeing you there. I'm not going to be making Hammond, but I am looking forward to Jackson. And uh, you've got something from a guy who probably is not a Harry's customer. And that's Randy, K7AGE, right? Well, I do, Don, and on the ham fest scene there, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing you here in Jackson in a couple of weeks. That's always a good ham fest. Um, it's it's probably one of the better ones down here in the deep south. There's yeah. uh, a good bit of boneyard stuff there, you know, a lot of swap tables. Of course, there's uh, plenty of new dealers there too, but, you know, I'm one of those guys who likes to look at those swap tables and especially the boxes they've got under the table. You know, that's yeah. a lot of times where the real yeah. treasures are. I know yeah. Gordon knows what I'm talking about. It's kind of like uh, dumpster diving. Exactly. Not I don't dumpster dive, though, but I, I will dive in a box under a ham fest table. <laughs> uh, well, uh, a couple of things I wanted to mention before we get into the episode here is uh, Tommy and Peter and I just put out Amateur Logic 73, and Tommy reviewed something on there that was pretty interesting. If you've got a uh, iPhone or an iPad or an Android tablet and you use the IRC DDB gateway software for DSTAR, well, there's a new app that just came out that allows you to control that from your mobile device and makes it much easier to operate DSTAR with IRC DDB software. So might want to check that out if you're into that. And Peter did a... Uh, uh, shootout on a couple of old shortwave receivers that Radio Shack made a number of years back and had some interesting stuff on that. And uh, I, you know, I like to shop for cool stuff sometime, and we've done that here before. And I did that again this time around on Amateur Logic with uh, All Electronics Corporation this time, a place that I've been buying junk from, I mean, good stuff from for years. But uh, you might want to check that out, amateurlogic.tv, and uh, see what we were into this month. 
And, you know, Gordon mentioned earlier uh, in the show about Quartz Fest and preparing for that and what all you needed. Well, Randy's been doing a little preparing himself, so let's take a look at his antenna. Hi, Randy, K7AGE. I'm getting ready to go to Quartzsite, Arizona to attend Quartz Fest, a big gathering of ham radio operators. I'll be taking our camp trailer, but first I thought I would check out my, my radio setup. I'm going to um, put up my 30-foot telescoping plastic pole. It's a wonder pole. And for my antenna, I'm going to, to use an LNR Precision 20-meter N-fed uh, dipole and uh, run some coax in to the trailer. So I'll show you how the um, antenna system here goes together. Here's a neat little thing I've made to, uh, to pull up the antenna. It's made out of a piece of PVC piping that will fit on the top of the wonder pole. And it has a pulley and a rope so I can pull up the antenna. Okay, so we're ready to put the pole up. And uh, first thing we gotta do is put the uh, pulley gizmo on the top of the, um, the pole. I'm just gonna let that drop. You wanna make sure you pull off uh, some line here and tie it up so you don't lose it up the pole. A pair of gloves just ends up being a little bit of a knuckle banger working around the ladder. So pick this up. Slides into the black pole. Trick is to loosen the top here without letting that drop in. And push up. And these have stops, so you don't have to worry about them coming out the top. Loosen the next section. Just run it all the way up. Section three going up. Section four. Section five up. And tighten it up. We're up. Okay, the pole is up, the rope is threaded. Now it's time for the dipole. This again is the uh, LNR Precision 20 meter end fed. It has this matching box. Got the connector on the end, and then about 33 feet of wire. So let's put it up. So I have about 50 feet of coax here, wrapped up with a Velcro cable tie. Hook one end onto the end of the dipole here. I'm just gonna work this around the trailer. And it's wrapped around the top, but it'll be okay. Over the roof of the trailer, I'm just gonna tie it off to the hitch here. Bring the rest of the coax around. Right here is a uh, hatch that's behind our sofa. Just put it up in there where I can get it. Let's go inside now. We should be ready to go. Okay, we're all set up outside. Now we're inside the trailer. For the computer, I have this Asus T100. This is a um, little convertible Windows 8.1 tablet netbook thing. You can uh, press the button here and the display comes off and then it mounts back into the keyboard. Over here is my FT817 with the signal link in the um, portable radio bag. And uh, we saw that before in one of my videos and also on, on Ham Nation, but before we fire everything up. I want to check the antenna. And I have one of these real common MFJ antenna analyzers. And if we look at it with the analyzer, the frequency here, it's right at 1400.000. And it says SWR is 1.1. So that's pretty good for the low end of 20 meters. And if I turn the frequency counter up here, I'm not sure if you can see that. I can go up here to. Um, there's 142, 7, 2, 8, 2, 9. Here's 300, it's at uh, SWR 1.7. If I go up to 350, the edge of the band, 62, it's 1.9. So I can really use this Zen Fed dipole the way it is across the entire 20 meter band. That's pretty good. Okay, this is a close up of FL Digi. This is free software that you can use for PSK and many other modes. CW, Contessa, Hellschreiber, MFSK. There's a whole menu 
of items here that you can choose from. So we're in PSK 31. Down here at the bottom is where the waterfall is shown, and this is how you tune. You just click on a signal down here uh, to tune it. If I click over here, I'm now receiving that signal. In this area here is where the receive text is shown. The blue area is my type ahead, so I can type ahead, and uh, then when the other station turns it over to me, I can go into transmit, and it'll start sending stuff out. Okay, let's see if we can uh, have a QSO. We can scare up somebody. I'm gonna transmit right here at 1500, and let's send a CQ out and see what happens. Got somebody. K7AGE, there's the magic of radio, seeing your call come back. KF7PDZ. Double click on that, goes into the log. And I'm gonna come back to him. His call, my call. Uh, thanks for coming back. Coming back to my uh, CQ. Here he comes back. Hi, Randy. We had a QSO a few a few minutes ago. Yes, we did, but my battery died <laughs> in the laptop here. <laughs> I didn't realize who you were. Uh oh. Knew I recognized the call, but could uh, but couldn't place it. Okay, well, the PSK is working. Everything seems to be working fine. Had a QSO there. I know it all works, so I got a lot of stuff to get ready and get packed up to go to, to Quartzfest and see many of the Ham Nation and many of my viewers there. So really looking forward to it, and we'll see you in the desert. 73, Randy, K7AGE. Well, 7-3, Randy, and we look forward to hearing from you and Gordo on how Quartz Fest turns out. It looks like it's going to be a great event. I'm going to have to try to make that one year, but they probably wouldn't want my little pup tent out there. Oh, you know, yeah, last, last week I uh, asked a question, what is the most popular 20 meter 20 meter frequency for analog slow scan television. And we had a winner on that, and it's uh, Don. I'm going to mispronounce his name because he didn't leave a call sign, or if he, he may not have one, I'm not sure. But it's uh, Don Kwiatniak. Don Kwiatniak, maybe. That might be his name. Anyway, I do have his email address, and I'm going to send him this copy of Inside. MCC, a technical guide to the Mission Control Center at Johnson Space Center. And also, since we were talking about amateur television last um, episode, we're going to give him a subscription to Amateur Television Quarterly Magazine, a one-year subscription from atvquarterly.com. So congratulations, Don. Hope you enjoy these prizes here. And I've got another question for next week, and that's going to be kind of following up on part of the topics this week, and I want to know what year was the first Quartz Fest held? If you think you know the answer for that, then send your answer to me at hamnationcontest at gmail.com, and you could win one of these chickens back here. No, actually, <laughs> we're going to give you a copy of QRP Projects from Down Under, for, uh, courtesy of MFJ. This is a, a book written by Dew Dre Dryman. Let me just try that again. This is a book <laughs> written by Drew Diamond, KC3XU. And, you know, I've been through this book. I've actually done uh, at least one project in here on smoke and solder before. And I'm not going to tell you which one it is, but I thought it was a pretty neat one. Anyway, uh, a great book from MFJ. If you want to win that, then tell me, what, what year was the first Quartz Fest hell? Have Nation I have a Contest question. At gmail.com. A question? Yeah. Uh, the, the, do they get the original or extra crispy version of that chicken back there? Uh, any way you want it. <laughs> well, I'll drink to that. Yeah, you'll get the feathered version, Don. Ooh, anyway, uh, enter the contest. Somebody's going to win that. But right now, let's get a message from one of the sponsors who helps make Ham Nation possible. 
Looking for a new rig that combines time-honored analog functionality with the ability to give you safe, hands-free operation via optional Bluetooth module? Check out ICOM's new IC2730A. This dual-band analog-only mobile has a great interface and enhanced radio features for your next 2-meter, 70-centimeter adventure. ICOM's IC2730A is built military tough and has a large high-contrast display, approximately one and a half times larger than its predecessor, the IC2720H. It's got a white backlight for easy readability and independent band controls. Practical 2730A features include wide frequency coverage, VHF, VHF, and UHF, UHF simultaneous receive capability, 50 watts output power on VHF and UHF bands, and 1,050. 52 memory channels. You can combine the IC2730's classic analog functionality with optional Bluetooth compatibility. For hands-free and remote control operation, install the optional VS3 Bluetooth headset and UT133 Bluetooth unit. Wirelessly control the radio with three programmable buttons plus a push-to-talk button. Make sure you visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on the IC2730A dual bander and other great ICOM amateur radio rigs. And you can tune in and enter to win after each episode of Ham Nation. Go to icomamerica.com and throw your name in the hat for some great swag prizes like T-shirts and hats. Uh, you can also learn how you can enter the monthly grand prize drawing for a new radio. Uh, go to icomamerica.com slash hamnation for the official rules and to check out all of ICOM's previous drawing winners. And for January, the grand prize is going to be the new IC2738 dual band analog mobile with a great interface and enhanced radio features like military tough construction, large high contrast display, 50 watts on VHF and UHF, plus optional Bluetooth compatibility for hands-free and remote operation. You know, that's the rig we just saw there in the commercial. So, a great rig. Go to icomamerica.com slash hamnation and register today. Sign up. Good luck. And don't forget to follow Icom America on Facebook and Twitter. And now let's get Dale in here and see what's been going on in the wide, wide world of videos. Hi, Dale. Okay, hey, uh, good evening to you, George. I tell you what, uh, it's uh, still a little bit cold here. I had some snow last night. But uh, we've got an invitation for everyone out there uh, to visit the Caribbean uh, during this cold weather and uh, a new Show Me Your Shack and a look at the DX Engineering Active antennas uh, being driven by an NCC1 phasing controller this evening. Well, it's too cold outside here right now, so... Angel Santana, W3, WP3GW, would like to uh, suggest a visit to Puerto Rico. Let's uh, take a listen.
Well, thanks, Angel. Sounds like a great time to get down to the Caribbean, take in the uh, state convention down there in Puerto Rico. Well, the last Show Me Your Shack was way back in 2014. In fact, it was way back on October 22nd. So uh, let's take a look now at 42 new images from your ham shacks taken in November and December. This is Show Me Your Shack for November and December 2014. Bill Salina, KM4EKE, sent us pictures from the Chattanooga Ham Fest. They had a great show. It took Bill 10 minutes to find a parking place. Vendors filled the building. There was a large-scale boneyard outside. There were many great sessions inside and the obligatory grand prize drawing. Dan W.A. Five CYR sent us a photo of his operating position and his four element bushcraft ATB 34 at 40 feet. He built that antenna in 1975. Glenn 8P6 in W in Barbados built his own 40 meter receiver and he sent us some photos. Everything was built on a breadboard. All of the breadboards can be plugged in or out separately. Well, Pat. KK4LGS sent us photos of his home-built go kit. Here's a look inside and a look at the power connectors. The front panel is silk screen. The kit's powerful to use in times of emergency and while traveling. In the meantime, Nick W5NSA sent us photos from his shack. Here's the wide view and a close-up look at the rig. He uses an FT847 and is operated from Poland as SO5 NSA. Jim KD0YTJ met up with Bob at the Nixa Missouri Ham Fest and enjoyed the great presentation. Kevin KC7FPF, a regular on the 40 meter post show net, sent us a picture of his shack and a close up look at the HF beams and HF verticals, uh, VHF verticals on his 60 foot Ron Tower. Mike W1MWB sent us a picture with his friend Dave, Alpha Alpha 1 Lima Oscar, operating a simulated emergency test at the York County Maine EMA. Greg N5XO and his wife Ruth KE5MHJ operate from this shack. They run on all bands from 80 meters up, but they concentrate on VH operations from 50 megahertz through 1296 megahertz. And here's their tower. It's loaded for bear. Chris KG4GSX in the Smoky Mountains sent us a picture of his shack starring Amanda K1DDN. He's a regular on the 40 meter post show net. Well, Jim AD5KD sent us shots of his vintage central electronic station along with a close up of his vintage Hammerland SP600. In the meantime, Bill, WX5W, recently turned 80 and marked 52 years as an amateur radio operator. His friend sent us a photo of Bill in his shack and his unusual suspect certificate of appreciation. His friend says he's a joy to talk to on the radio and a true inspiration. We hope you had a very happy birthday, Bill. Well, Gary, WA2HDQ, also has a Hammerland SP600 and plenty of literature from ham radio in the 60s. His dad, Robert Cornwell, was the technical editor for Radio Electronics then. And here's Gary's workbench. And here are two of the vintage magazines, both from 1961. Larry, WD0AKX, is another regular on the 40 meter post show net. Also contributes videos to Ham Nation occasionally. Here he is listening to Christmas music on the Halicrasters S38C that he restored a few years ago. Philippe F5PTA sent us his photo of a shack in France, complete with his new Heil ProSet Elite headset. Lanny N0JZ and a regular on the 3885 AM net sent us photos of his shack with the refurbished Johnson Viking 2 Here's a close-up of his Johnson Viking Model 122 VFO. And here's the Mocan group at the Brighton Ham Fest. They run on 3885 kHz AM nets every uh, morning during the week at 9 o'clock. 
Michael, WB0SND, has a collection of vintage gear that he uses on the air daily. Here's another desk loaded with more of the collection. Chico Charlie, H, uh, rather K6, HTM, shares hobbies with Bob Heil. Besides ham radio, they both love theater organ. They both hold doctorates. We've had several viewers request ugly ham shack pictures. So William, KG4AQH, wanted to make the first contribution. Looks like there might be a clear path large enough for him to reach that operator's chair. Maybe. And last but not least, from our good friend Simon, FL2FAE, he sent us this T-shirt photo. He suggested George get one and wear it on the smoke and solder segment. <laughs> That's it. Show me your shack for December uh, 2014. <laughs> Going into January 2015. Make sure to send your shack photos to Ham Nation videos at TWIT.TV. Okay, George, maybe we can get Simon to send you that t shirt there. So, uh, okay, uh, get your photos in. We've got two already for the next Show Me Your Shack. So uh, get them in and we'll get them on, as they say. So, uh, Let's uh, close out tonight's videos with a look at the DX Engineering NCC1 phasing controller. It's hooked up to two matching active antennas out in the swamp. You turn up the volume now, listen to the difference with and without this amazing tool. me. <laughs> W9LX, my Elmer, he, he had given me a car radio, a six volt car radio out of an old, old tube type radio out of a car. At K0HYD, we have a high noise level on the 160 through 40 meter bands. The end of the off center fed dipole is only 25 feet from a high voltage power line. Test with an active loop antenna didn't pan out, so we tried a DX engineering dual active antenna array an NCC1 phasing controller. We placed the antennas in a swampy area of the pasture 600 feet from the power lines. There are two 96-inch whip antennas with active amplifiers, two 490-foot-long feed lines, two feed line current chokes, and two lightning arresters. Last, uh, week of September, I hadn't been on, uh, on any uh, to set up the NCC-1, you tune a weak but steady AM broadcast station, peak the signal with normal phase, then switch to reverse phase and null out the signal. A very good Friday to you. I'm Phil White with a look at news this hour. A windshield storm between state representative Ed Trimmer and Republican challenger Larry Allen last night touched several hot revenue issues and did contentious at times, especially when it came to education funding. According to a report by the Winfield Daily Courier, Allen said he believes Kansas has great schools. I do know this. Tommy had a 718 that I sent him that was working. And when he got it, the bias wasn't set right. And that was my fault because I had burnt the key. Well, the uh, active antennas were very easy to assemble. And with the 75 ohm cable connector toolkit there from DX Engineering at uh, was even easy to attach uh, around 18 uh, or 20, around somewhere 18 like that, 20 connectors. Uh, on the next video segment, I hope to uh, catch up on some of the videos you've uh, seen sent in during the past month or so. But don't forget to get your Show Me Your Shack photos in also, and uh, we'll get those on. Again, the address Ham Nation videos at TWIT.TV. And since this is my first appearance for 2015, Happy New Year. Bob's up next. He's got an interesting audio equipment video, and let's see what he's been up to at CES. Bob, take it away. 
A happy new year to you, Dale, and thanks for all of your great work, and uh, we really appreciate it. I know it takes a lot of time. I got I, I to gotta take a little left turn here before we get into these videos. I got a very nice email from, from Dave, K-A-D-A-L, and he's talking about his daughter is taking all of her classes and stuff, and she's having a very difficult time with, with the equations. And we know the master equation of this uh, hobby is uh, Ohm's Law. And, and, you know, you have all of these crazy things, the circles and uh, triangles and put your finger over this. It all basically comes down to this. You have to realize that we're dealing with I equals what? E-R. And R equals E. How do you remember all this stuff? How do you remember this stuff? Well, I have a very simple way, and I've been using this to, for years. Uh, and it involves several things. It involves uh, things you'll never forget. An eagle, an Indian, and a rabbit. Okay? Eagle, Indian, and rabbit. You got it? Very simple. You will never forget Ohm's Law. Never. Because here's what happens. When the eagle is flying overhead, he sees what's left, the rabbit and the Indian. So it's E equals IR. They're all on the same plane down here. When the Indian is left looking at what you got, Eagle and the rabbit, the eagle always flies over the rabbit. So it's I equals ER, and that's E over R, eagle over rabbit. Last but not least, you got the old rabbit left. What's he see? When he looks out, he sees the eagle in the end in. R equals E over I. And it's really simple, and you will never forget Ohm's Law, and it's very important in this hobby. So there you go. We're very proud here in Springfield. We've got 75 people so far that uh, listen to our radio show we do on KSGF every Saturday morning with Matt Canovi. And uh, these people have bought their uh, equipment. They've got Gordon's books and Joey McKelvey and Bill. They're just, they're going crazy. Uh, teaching classes here. We're going to end up with uh, probably 100 new hams in this area sometime in the next few months. We're very excited about that. And these are the kind of things that we're trying to teach them and things that are in my new book if you don't have the new book. Well, we have some videos of, uh, of Las Vegas. I was very honored to be uh, taken out to, uh, to Vegas by the Klipsch company. Paul Klipsch was the master of hi-fi in the late 40s. Uh, he invented the folded horn, and he single-handedly took hi-fi to a new realm, and it, it really went crazy after he got involved. He was one of the founders of the Audio Engineering Society, and um, they had a special uh, a tribute to him at CES in his booth, they had a radio studio. They brought a gal in from the UK, and she did uh, hour and a half uh, interviews with us. And there were three or four of them. One of them was the incredible uh, master recorder, Eddie Kramer. He did the Beatles. He did all of the recordings of Zed, Led Zeppelin. The guy is really incredible. We've never met. And so we had a good time meeting, and uh, Marky Ramon was there. And here are some of the pictures as we go through it. Uh, this is when I met Eddie. Uh, he's such a great guy. Just run on through these, uh, Brian, real quick, because I know we're running out of time. Uh, this was going into the display area, and um, uh, that's Jim. Uh, who There we are on the air, and I was laughing about something. We were up in this booth that was about 10 foot above the floor. I was explaining the talk box. That's the... Uh, uh, that's a throat microphone of the World War II pilots. That's how the talk box started back in the 30s, and that was the basis of modulating your voice. That speaker I'm pointing to uh, was a speaker that uh, I, I had Paul Clips build for me. He built four of them. They were used as stage monitors for Jeff Beck. Jeff wanted some big, loud monitors, and we were the guys that brought monitors to the stages because we understood phasing. 
phasing, be able to run those speakers out of phase, they wouldn't feed back. We were the guys that brought it. How do we learn it? Ham radio. And there's Colleen Murphy. They brought her over from England. She does some uh, radio uh, interviews and stuff in England. And she, and, wow, does she know uh, uh, classic music? Oh, my goodness. So uh, we, we were very honored to be there. There's this, there's when we were learning down. You, you can't hardly see it, but that monitor's down there on the floor. I had my hand on it. And Jeff and I are talking about it. That was in a rehearsal hall in England. And that's Bobby Tench. Uh, is a vocalist and there that was a cool picture uh how what was it 45 years later i took that picture to the uh, one of the gigs that he played and he signed it so we were uh, we look a little different than we did in that picture but uh, <laughs> hey it was it was fun uh and my career's been fun and uh, i continue so i thought i'd share some of that with you because i know we got some old rock and rollers in the uh, in the audience so don uh you probably recognize some of that is that right <laughs> oh yeah, I'm a huge yeah. I'm a huge Beck fan. That's just uh, that's that's cool stuff. That's awesome. That's uh, and I'm I'm so uh, I'm so happy for you and proud of you with your doctorate and everything. And if I had my hat, I'd I'd flip the tassel <laughs> like we did, <laughs> like we did uh, last time. Hey, let's uh, let's talk about DX engineering while we're sitting here. That was some amazing audio by from Dale uh, audio and video showing exactly what that that uh, that NCC one will do for you. And it's on page seventy nine right here of the DX Engineering Catalog. Do you have your DX Engineering Catalog? Well, why not? What's wrong with you? I don't want you in the house unless you have a DX Engineering Catalog. You know, the engineering, uh, the uh, the internet rather, has made everything just so easy, and that includes buying ham radio gear. You can click around, do a ton of comparison shopping, and then buy from the store with the lowest price, right? Well, uh, maybe, but nah, probably not. How do you know that the new internet store is gonna give you the right part? Or the stuff that you order is going to get there fast, if at all. Oh, my Lord, so many horror stories out there. Well, DX Engineering has a beta price guarantee. It answers all of those questions. So go ahead, shop around for the lowest price. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, shop around, go ahead. If you find it in stock somewhere else, DX Engineering will honor the lower price guarantee. They are so confident at DX Engineering that you'll find the lowest price at DXEngineering.com. They streamline the uh, business model. It's super efficient. It ensures that the prices stay low. And if you do find a lower price somewhere else, just call up DX Engineering, contact them somehow, let them know. You'll always be able to enjoy the lowest prices on your ham radio gear without rolling the dice, guaranteed. And you'll get the DX Engineering unparalleled shipping speed. Most orders ship the same day. They arrive at their destinations within a few days and you get access to the DX Engineering team of experts that will make sure that the part you need is the one that you order. And the part that you order is the one that you get. Man, that's important. The beta price guarantee does not include typos, online auctions, used or refurbished gear. So keep that in mind. But the advertised price you find must reflect an item that the competitor has in stock. Find all the details on the beta price guarantee at dxengineering.com. We can also call DX Engineering, talk to a representative to clear up any questions that you might have. They're there for you all the time. So there you got it right there. Shop anywhere on the planet. If you can find a lower price anywhere, call up DX Engineering and tell them. The beta price guarantee means that you won't have to sacrifice service or quality by buying from somewhere else. I want you to do something for me. Call DX Engineering. DX Engineering ships faster than anyone else in the industry. If you get your order in by 10 p.m. Eastern tonight and it's in stock, it will be on a truck headed your way tonight. Proven products, expert advice, the beta price guarantee, and an awesome catalog. DX Engineering is helping you shrink the globe. Request your catalog or shop online 24 hours a day, seven days a week at dxengineering.com slash ham nation. DX Engineering, thank you so much for your support of ham nation. I'm not going to be able to make it to Quartz Fest, but I got a hat just like Gordon does from the off road ham folks. They're at 7225. So if you're on 40, go check those guys out because they're cool guys and, and, and you'll like them. So there you go. They're almost as cool as those guys at DX Engineering. And Amanda's pretty cool too. Amanda, are you with us tonight? Hey. I am hey, here. Darling. How you doing? Better now. All right. Well, hey, I've got a couple announcements here on some upgrades, some new licensees, and then we're going to get right into the question. So first I have KY9USN Sam. He just upgraded to extra. Way to go. That is so, it's so hard. Um, KG5EZI, he'd like to announce that his wife was just a newly licensee. K5 
KG5FGZ is her call sign. Congrats there. And KD8ZZY just got his license in mid-December. So again, big round of applause, you guys. Good work there. With that, I do have a couple of questions. Um, first one, this is from Tom in 4HAI. He says he would like to see a little bit more CW intro on Ham Nation. But in the meantime, what is a good way to uh, start putting out his feelers for that and learning CW? Bob, you want to take that? Um, I'm borrowing your headset, by the way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> had to get it all shaped, and here I are. <laughs> the only problem is I can't hear myself because I don't have anything plugged in. <laughs> uh, we're working on several things here uh, coming up soon, and uh, CW is one of them. So be uh, ha ha hanging around. You'll be able to learn a little bit more about wonderful CW because there's a lot of CW activity. And what's really great is a, a lot of guys and gals that get into the hobby they get in going, oh, I don't like that code and stuff. Then they get in it and find out, wait a minute. So, yeah, we've got some things coming up on that. And uh, uh, it, it'll be happening here in a, in a couple of months. That's what we're working on. Very good. Thank you, Bob. And by the way, I love them. All pink. That, And we have to thank Sarah for that. Thank you, Sarah, so much. Uh, you're the best. Uh, not only purple now, but now pink. And I think Val really enjoys hers too. So thanks so much, Bob. Uh, next question. Let's send this out to, uh, we have, well, this is for George. George, uh, Sybil in 6 IBI would like to know, could you um, describe again what the iPhone D-Star app you were to, talking about earlier in the show tonight? Can you tell us where to get that, all that good stuff? Yeah, it works um, for those using the IRC DDB software. Uh, that's Jonathan Naylor software. That's uh, it's uh, that's not an ICOM radio. This is software that runs on uh, PCs and Raspberry Pis and and different things that allow you to get on D Star, and you can remotely control that with an iPhone, an iPad, or an Android device. Uh, just go to your uh, app store for your device and search for IRC DDB, and you should find the app right there. And I'm working on a device uh, right now that's going to run the IRC DDB software, and I'm looking forward to getting that app to, to operate it with. I think that'll make it much simpler, and Tommy was really happy with it. Very good. Uh, thanks so much for that, George. And since I got you uh, on the line here, um, one more thing. Can you give us the answer to last week's question? A few people on chat missed it. Um, yeah, let me see what last week's question was because I don't <laughs> remember. Oh, what is the most popular 20-meter frequency for analog SSTV? And the answer was 14.23 megahertz. And that's for analog. On digital, I believe you'll find it around 14.233. And a while ago, while I was butchering Don's name, uh, I got an email from him. His call sign is AB2YQ, and he won the question this week. Very good. Well, I appreciate that. It's fun to run into those hey, guys um, occasionally on 20 meters. Go ahead, Bob. Amanda, I've got a little insertion at this point, too, and I think, George, you're going to agree with this. A lot of the new people coming into the hobby, they don't realize sometimes they just pick a frequency and start chatting. And 14230 has been reserved for decades for people that do amateur television and slow scan television. And so you want to stay away from those frequencies. It's a gentleman's agreement, exactly like AM uh, on, on uh, 75 meters from 3870 to 3890 back in the 60s was a gentleman's agreement laid down that that's where the AM is going to be. So if you're going to get on 75, my gracious, we've got a band that's this wide. So don't go piling on the AM window. That's a gentleman's agreement. It's not the FCC. It's us. We police ourselves, you know. And when you get on to 20 meters... You want to stay away from 14 to 30 around in there. And on 40, it's really tough. They're just that top band from 70 to 90 
to 95 right in there and we can only get a couple of conversations but has it been more and more guys and they're all new hams that go piling in with their single sideband and the am frequencies are, it's really tough so it, it's something and i think uh, george you'll agree with that on the uh, slow scan that uh, 14 230 is pretty much it on 20 right I believe so. I think there were a couple other frequencies that are occasionally used, but 14230 is pretty much it. And along with what you said, Bob, about AM there, uh, a friend of mine put it a good way. You don't want to go messing around the AM window there with sideband transmissions and jamming up those guys because with the stuff they're running, if they want to, um, <laughs> I mean, legally, they're not required to sit in that window, but, you know, all of them, they're there. They don't go other places and operate. Maybe down in the extra portion where there's plenty of room and, and unoccupied frequencies, you might hear AM down there occasionally. But, you know, you don't want to run those guys out of that window because if they needed to go somewhere else, nobody else is going to talk there. That's, <laughs> That's right. right. Well, I, I ran into those guys on uh, 7290 not too long ago. And uh, I had no idea that they were doing AM there. I'd never heard of the gentleman's agreement, and they were very nice to explain it to me. So good group of guys, and uh, I hope more people go on just to say hello occasionally for them. Go ahead, Bob. Well, that that's the whole thing is that the guys running AM are incredibly uh, – uh, personable they're, they're very agreeable and they're all gentlemen it's really a different kind of operation put your transceiver on am sometime and go uh, join us all so i just wanted to throw that in it was a good point to make with uh, with us talking about slow scan amanda very good oh, and uh, slow scan is uh fun to run into them and listen to them talk as well uh go ahead george any final comments about that yeah, I just wanted to tell Bob, I heard him on slow scan. I mean, not slow scan. I heard him on AM. I don't remember if it was last night or the night before, but I heard you talking with some guys, I believe, on 3885. You were uh, pretty weak on me. I don't know what you were running, but I just wanted to let you know that, yeah, we copied you here in Mississippi. Yep. We're, we're there <laughs> having fun. That's usually where you'll find me. Very good. Well, hey, um, the only thing else we have to talk about right now is the after show nets. Uh, does anyone have the info? I know 20 meters is shut down uh, because of band conditions. Anyone have the frequencies on uh, on 40 and 80? Yeah, 40 meters is going to be right around 7.278. Somebody posted 7.277.5. Well, if you go to either one of those frequencies, zero beat it. Just get right on whatever frequency they're mm -hmm. on there, uh, and that's going to be it. You'll you'll find it right there around 7.278. Uh, D-Star is, as usual, going to be on Reflector 14 Module C, or you can go to hamnationdstar.net, and you can listen to it right there on the website if you don't have a D-Star radio. And also, uh, we've got to drop in, star do drop in, star node number 355800 for you Echo Link guys. And Cheryl is going to be on 3847 kilocycles again this week too. So plenty of places there. Very good. And one more question, George. I know you do nets occasionally on the do drop in after your amateur logic show. Is there a schedule to that? It's usually the first Monday after the show, and we just released the show uh, this week. So the, our net for Amateur Logic will be this coming Monday night. And uh, just mention it here. I wasn't going to say anything, but, you know, we did a pilot episode of Ham College back in November. Tommy and I did. And we got uh, just really tremendous response to that. So we're going to be starting a production of Ham College this year. And that's a show for new hams or those studying to get their license. But, you know, older guys are, are finding it interesting, too. And that's going to be at the end of every month. And the first one will be at the end of January. Very good, George. Well, I know a lot of people enjoyed the first show there. So, hey, you guys, that's all the questions I have for tonight. Um, Gordo and the gang, you guys have fun in Quartz Fest. Uh, court, yeah, Quartz Fest. And uh, Bob, we'll send it back to you guys. I'll have a good night. Eh, good job as usual. Thanks to all in the chat room, and uh, George, that was uh, that was perfect. All of that was perfecto, and uh, I, I applaud you and Tommy to keep that all going. And I look forward to the Ham College, man. Uh, we need more training for uh, people wanting to get into the hobby and people that are here. There's a big void after they get the license. 
now what? <laughs> now what do I do? And uh, that's always been a, a real, it's been a real thorn in my side because so many times these guys will get their license and they, the, the clubs will get them all enthused. They get their license and they kick them to the curb. See on 40 meter, duh, I'm supposed to know how to operate this stuff. Mm -hmm. So we need to help them. And you know what? I learn. I, I've been going to these classes here in Springfield that uh, Joey and Bill Gil Gilmore are doing. It. I, <laughs> it's amazing. You, you, boy, you've been, I've been a ham since 56. You think I know it all? you got to be kidding. Nobody knows it all. You always learn things. So I, I applaud you in doing that. Well, it's been a great night. I know we went over time. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Leo Laporte and all out in Petaluma to give us the bandwidth. Thanks to everybody that watches and supports uh, uh, the advertisers here. And we're going to have a lot of fun things coming up this year. So have your friends join us, and we'll uh, we'll be back again next week. Well, I, I, I don't think I will. I'm going to be uh, out again. But um, we'll, uh, we'll join you shortly after. But let me tell you, there's plenty of talent on this show, and I appreciate everybody being here. So in the meantime, we're going to see. I got that one on Cheryl's Frequency, 3847. I got that one on 7278. I can just flip two switches and back and forth, and I'm there. So <laughs> I'll be there in a little bit. Thanks, everybody. We'll be talking and uh, catch you on the air, uh, probably on AM here. Uh, we're, we're sure enjoying our uh, ICO setup that you saw here a few weeks ago, but uh, I get on sideband a lot. So 7-3, everybody. I enjoy being here. Thanks for all the work that everybody does to put this together. This is K9EID in the Ozarks. Bye-bye for now. 73. 73, everybody.